The measles virus has doubled in the amount of cases seen by doctors. A virus that was once rare has returned with a vengeance in Southern California. Most physicians around my age have never seen measles because we just don't see it very often anymore. Unfortunately, it's becoming much more common. Measles, because it is airborne, can still be in the environment for two hours after an infected individual has left uh, a location. People just in proximity, breathing the same air as the infected person, can get sick. The symptoms of measles to look for are a high fever, persistent cough, and this classic rash that's the signature symptom of the infection. Measles, whooping cough, and other vaccine-preventable diseases, they're making a comeback. Why? Well, the biggest culprit is when people don't get vaccinated. And here to tell us more about this is our good friend and colleague, Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, the Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. It is so great to be back. So great to be here. So we also have joining us Stephanie, who has some questions as a mother about immunizations for her three-year-old daughter, Leah. Welcome, Stephanie. Hi, Leah. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Hello. So Leah here, she's current on all of her vaccinations, but when she turns four, she will need multiple vaccinations. I'm wondering, is that going to be overwhelming for her system? You know, one thing it is important for everyone to remember is that babies and children, they respond to a lot of challenges to their immune system every single day from the time they're born. It can be the bacteria from the birth canal to the germs that are on the ground and, of course, the foods we eat. You know, there's ample evidence for the current recommended vaccination schedule. And as a mother, I have to tell you, when I used to take my little ones in, it just broke my heart because I knew that they didn't like the shots. But as a physician holding many a sick baby, I knew that the situation could be much worse. And so I realized that the best way to protect my children was through vaccinations. The CDC recommendations offer protection against 14 diseases in children in as little as seven doctor visits under the age of two. That's a period that they're at such high risk and they can kind of catch anything um, from anywhere. So it's really good that Leah is up to date and that you're already thinking about her boosters. So what happens if we do fall behind schedule on immunization? Yeah, so an immunization's timing is so important. The CDC recommends certain vaccinations and boosters at specific times. And this is recommended in order to protect at times when children are most vulnerable and also to kind of work with their developing immune system. So if you miss one of those appointments or find yourself behind, get right back in and call, get on schedule, get a new, new appointment made. Dr. Lewis Hall, CDC, a lot of people hear that term, Centers for Disease Control. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what they do here in the U.S. Absolutely. And actually, they're the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. So this is a governmental um, agency or organization made up of medical experts whose job it is to protect us against threats to health, safety, and security from outside of our country and inside the U.S. And managing this vaccination schedule is one of the most important ways that they protect us. And they're not only protecting children, there's a vaccination schedule for teens and adults too. And a lot of us forget that. We're like, done with that. You know, childhood vaccination's over. But it's very important to know that there are vaccines that help protect us at all stages of life. And of course, for more information, you can go to cdc.gov. And of course, for more health tips uh, and resources, you can go to gethealthystayhealthy.com. And Stephanie and Leah, thank you so much for being with us today. We'll be right back.